One of the prime characters in the early books of Clan of the Cave Bear was an old and crippled Neanderthal man. His name was Kreb. Kreb was a shaman for the clan. He was believed to have special powers and served as an intermediary to the spirit world. Kreb's companion, Issa, was the medicine woman of the clan. Issa used hand-picked plants, flowers, roots, and bark to cure various illnesses and heal injuries of the members of the clan. Neanderthals lived a precarious life. They were highly prone to injuries. They hunted big game at close range. They were also susceptible to pathogens, parasites, or insects. Now, new evidence is emerging, backing up previous hypotheses that Neanderthals engaged in regular self-medication and healing. It appears they may have even used various tools for crude surgical procedures. When Neanderthals were first discovered in the late 1800s, they were not well received. They were seen as brutes, lesser humans. One top anthropologist even dubbed them Homo stupidus. Another said they were a bestial kind. Quote, anthropologists who first studied Neanderthals believed they were the embodiment of primitive humans, scavengers with primitive tools, incapable of language or symbolic thought. Continuing, quote, now researchers believe that Neanderthals were highly intelligent, able to adapt, and capable of developing highly functional tools. They were quite accomplished, end quote. Professor Fred H. Smith, Illinois University. Neanderthal Healing and Self-Medication a series of papers were published in 2021, lead author Professor Karen Hardy on Neanderthal self-medication. Quote, Neanderthals ate plants, they self-medicated using a range of medicinal plants, and they used complex material processing methods for plant materials, end quote, Professor Karen Hardy. Hardy et al. paper. We identified compounds from two non-nutritional plants, yarrow and chamomile, in a sample of Neanderthal dental calculus from the northern Spanish site of El Cidron. Continuing, we propose, indeed, that these plants were selected and ingested deliberately for the purpose of self-medication. NBC News, scientists find medicinal plants caught in Neanderthal teeth, 2012. From dental scrapings, chemicals that are found in yarrow and chamomile, two types of herbal remedies used to cleanse wounds. Continuing, and chamomile may be best known today as a soothing tea but that's because it has a settling effect on colds, headaches, intestinal distress, and menstrual cramping. Another paper was released in 2016, evidence for the paleoethnobotany of the Neanderthal. Study we found evidence for Neanderthal's nutritional, medicinal, and ritual use of plants, which includes 61 different taxa from 26 different plant families found at 17 different archaeological sites. Quote, Neanderthals had a sophisticated knowledge of their natural surroundings and were able to recognize both the nutritional and the medicinal value of certain plants, end quote, Professor Hardy. Professor Penny Speakins, D 
Department of Archaeology, University of York, Neanderthal healthcare was widespread, knowledgeable, and effective in reducing mortality risk. Shanidar. The most impressive evidence that Neanderthals engaged in healthcare comes from the Shanidar cave in Iraq. Pressbooks.edu. Shanidar is located in the Zagros Mountains in the Kurdistan region of northern Iraq. The Shanidar Neanderthals were discovered in 1960 by American archaeologists from the Smithsonian Institute, Ralph and Rose Solecki. There were six well-preserved skeletons in all, ranging from infants to full adults. One of the six individuals was buried in a distinct manner, surrounded by flowers and medicinal plants. Columbia.edu. Selecki discovered several sets of Neanderthal skeletal remains and famously used pollen analysis to suggest that one individual had been buried under a blanket of flowers. Continuing, although the body was archaic, he later wrote of one of the male Neanderthals, the spirit was modern, he had a soul. Solecki made the case that this individual may have been a kind of medicine man or shaman in his group. Shanidar Shaman Selecki in his papers and books often added a mystical element to the Neanderthals, describing them as a mysterious people of the Northlands. Critics charged that he leaned too heavily on the speculative and even delved into fantasy and legend. New York Times 2019, the novelist Jean M. All was inspired by Dr. Selecki's research to write The Clan of the Cave Bear. From Cambridge University Archaeology, Shanidar provided inspiration for Jean All in her book Clan of the Cave Bear. Interview Jean All, Goodreads 2011. Dr. Ralph Selecki did a dig in Iraq called Shanidar Cave. They found a Neanderthal skeleton of an old man. Continuing, he had been injured, blind in one eye, arm amputated. He was probably crippled from a young age. That became the basis for Crip, a character in Clan of the Cave Bear. Healing at Shanidar. Professor Karen Hardy notes in her paper, the four adults suffered a range of injuries from which they had recovered. It is unlikely this could have occurred without the use of antibacterial plants. Continuing, near the graves at Shanandar, clusters of pollen from several plants, including ephedra, identified as having significant medicinal properties. According to the Smithsonian, flowers from the Malvisii family were most prevalent at the dig site. Solecki's Legacy There is little doubt that the discoveries at Shanandar contributed to changing attitudes about the Neanderthals during the later decades of the 20th century. Solecki, who retired in New Jersey, lived to be 101 years old. The Smithsonian sponsored one final trip for him to Shanandar in his late 90s. Obituary. He was enthusiastic and active in Near Eastern archaeology. He loved everything archaeological. 
Solecki's Hypothesis on Neanderthal Rituals. Pressbooks.edu. Solecki's interpretation of the Shannondar IV flower burial remains controversial because he used it to argue that Neanderthals possessed behaviors and a mentality attributed to later Cro-Magnon. But a paper released in 2020 seems to give credence to Solecki's hypothesis of Neanderthal ritual practices. Titled, Homo Neanderthalensis and the Evolutionary Origins of Ritual in Homo Sapiens. Co-authors, Michelle Langley, Sari Shipton, and Mark Nielsen. Study. At Neanderthal sites with over 20 individuals represented at some, such as Krapnia, indicates Neanderthal burial was in certain cases at least a repeated normative practice. Continuing, in some instances, rituals are linked to specific places that evoke a sense of specialness. Also suggestions of Neanderthal grave markers are present. Continuing, other evidence that may shed light on Neanderthal propensity for ritual is the extensive record of used mineral pigments. Solecki's Neanderthal shaman may have existed after all. A series of recent papers published by superstars in paleoanthropology have confirmed that Neanderthals and Homo sapiens lived side by side for much longer than previously believed, up to 12,000 years. The researchers suggest likely mutual cooperation and possibly even cohabitation. Quote, this fundamentally changes our previous knowledge about the period. Homo sapiens reached northwestern Europe long before Neanderthal disappearance in southwestern Europe. End quote. Jean-Jacques Hublon. Did Neanderthals and Homo sapiens join together in ritual ceremonies? Did the Homo sapiens convert the Neanderthals into adopting their pagan rituals? Or did the Neanderthals teach the incoming Homo sapiens of the spirits and ritualism of the Northwoods of Europe? Thank you for watching. We'll see you soon.